Hello and welcome back to Dread Delusion. And uh, we're on our way to the Crucible. Trying to find it. Uh, while we were hunting down uh, Vela. I think it's through here. Yeah, we gotta take this elevator down to the ruined city. Here we go. I'm sure my friends will follow me later. I'll just go down on my own. And uh, the crucible might be where... Um, whether some being or something that caused the world to end. Possibly. Maybe. There was some hinting at that. Oh, hi. You're here. These are the deplorable slums of the Umbarian underclasses. Many think every Umbarian must have lived like a king, but they built their sprawling cities from the blood and sweat of the poor. Yeah, it seems to always work out that way. With such technological prowess, the Umbarians could have built a paradise for every person in their empire, but I think they enjoyed the disparity. After all, for one to be considered rich, another must be destitute. It's why I could never believe in Vela's ambition. Call me a cynic, but paradise is only for the paradoxical. Uh, uh, periodicals? Okay. In truth, we'll always be scrambling in the mud. Let's join arms and fight together. Alright, she's joining me again. saw that mushroom. I knew something was hidden around here. That mushroom man. Gotta be this. Alright, what do we got here? Secret? Uh, it's something. Oh, that was a painting. Uh, hello. You're stuck in the ground. That's cool. Does this take me back to my tent? No. Not sure where this is. I need you. There you are. Another big boy with a tower shield. I like the design of your shield. Oh god. There we go, two on one. That makes it a lot easier. Nothing there. Pretty much just circling this tower. The amphitheater, I think. Is that the amphitheater? Where I came from? Oh god. Okay, that looks like an elevator. Where does that go? It's not the same elevator I was at.
Is it? I guess... I guess it is. It looked different, though. I didn't see the um, mushroom thing. Oh, there it is. Okay. Okay. Go back through here. This time we'll go... Let's see, I went that way last time. Let's go straight ahead. The Duchess. Hi, how's it going? As a child, I would stare down from Verdant, past the clouds below, to the shimmering ocean of light that was the Imperian Empire. I believed that every man, woman, and child must have gone to bed with a full belly. It's strange to see that, in fact, they had their serfs and peasants just the same. Yeah, it's just like she said, you can't have the rich without the poor. It's always going to be some kind of disparity. I don't know what that did. I assume that's blood all over the ground. But it's everywhere. It could just be... Yeah, rust. I don't know. Ow. What kind of weapon is that? That's cool. I want to get a, a better look at him. But they disappear too quick. I think when I confront Vela, the... Oh, here we go. Something has changed. A door has opened. A more interesting option would be to side with her. I mean, we'll see what what she says and what kind of options we have. I guess we'll go in here. But I'm kind of leaning towards siding with her because I don't like these union peeps and it's a crappy world and maybe maybe she can make it better and if she destroys the world what have you lost anyway really um I can pick that There we go. Put back on the filtration mask. Speed boots. Natty looking boots, but more than just fashionable. The silver toe caps are inscribed with cipher magic. That quickens the wearer's footsteps, increasing movement speed by 40%. Is that a... Okay, that's one of these items. Uh... Make locks easier to pick or... Speed shoes. Running 40% faster sounds good. Yeah, I don't think I need these speed shoes. I, I run pretty fast anyway. 
I'll just stick with uh, the lockpick item. Okay, I think I lost my companion. I'll catch up, I'm sure. Hiya. Oh, that is... It's a cool cannon. These enemies are like something you'd find in Doom. Cool design. I like it. I approve. Great art direction for this game. Oh, hello. Okay, this is how we're getting back up. Hi, no keys necessary this time, Confessor. I've applied the lessons of my inconclusive struggle with the auto coach to this, uh, Recalcitrant elevator, and it proved no match for Caxton Frost. I mean, Horace Metcalf. Congrats, you got an elevator working. When you throw the lever, we shall soar like dragonflies up to the highest peaks of this metropolis, or possibly be catapulted if I've misjudged the velocity. Uh, blow me. This is exhilarating. Um. Alright, well... We'll, we'll blow him in just a second. We're gonna fly sky high. Oh. I've got a little more to explore down here. Or iron ore, but I need Imbarian ore. Yeah, this game has, um, faults, but art direction isn't one of them. Oh. What is this? Embarian Vault Key, an ornate heavy key with a note wrapped around it. This note is hastily scrawled in Old Embarian. You can make out a single word, Sky Realms. Embarian Vault Key. Was there a vault up there that I couldn't get in. I vaguely remember one giant door that I couldn't access. Where does this go? Hi. Looks like this shaft leads back to the coach house. Uh, use it if you need to resupply, but try not to linger. We've got a ways to go yet. Last I saw him, Frost was repairing an elevator at the base of one of those giant towers. If it works, that should get us to where we need to go. Can I go back up and sleep? Oh yeah, this will take me back to the tent. Maybe this is why I need the key. There's a door up here. One thing that looks a little weird um, is the flat lighting. It kind of makes it uh, not difficult, but kind of awkward to gauge distance sometimes um, and distinguish objects and, you know, things from each other. 
Um, so I think some kind of shading would help. But um, obviously they wanted that retro look. I'm sure they played around with a lot of different styles. They probably tried some kind of primitive shading technique. So, so where we'd have shading, but it would still have that retro look and it didn't work or something. I don't know. I, I do wonder what the game would look like with some kind of shading. Like some kind of light fall off, maybe shadows. Things get more dark at a distance. We're going up. Because even something as basic like that, like um, distant objects are just darker than nearby objects. That can help a lot. But uh, I don't know if that would work in a, a, such a large world like this. That works more in... Um, uh, works better in... Games with uh, dungeons and have a lot of tight spaces. Quest updated. You're making your way through the Underlands to confront Vela. You have ascended to the top of some exceptionally tall structures. You should make your way to the auto coach at the top of the tallest building. That? Okay, where's the auto coach? Ah, uh, this does not look safe. I do like how a lot of this is two-dimensional. Like the, um... The floor is just a, a two-dimensional texture. There's no... Th yeah, it's just a flat texture. That definitely helps with the retro look. Getting through there. I like the lightning effect. Or the distant buildings is just uh you got the silhouette. Looks cool. Is that the amp that's not the amphitheater? That's the amphitheater. What is that ball? Is that the crucible? Okay, I think we're in the amphitheater building. It's just uh, high up. Hiya. Frost is craning his neck to examine the ornamental ceiling. The markings are intriguing, elaborate, yet entirely abstract. No apparent representation of figures or scenes. Perhaps the Imperians held mathematics and geometry in higher respect than myth. Ta, ha, doubt it. No doubt this pattern had some ritual significance. Mathematics and geometry. Who needs that? Ah, yeah, that's pretty well done. Hi. Looks like something big's up ahead. Let's not get careless. Let's join arms and fight together. Again. Something big? Like that?
That is a big sword. No, I wanted to see the sword. It looked like a chainsaw sword. Sad. Alright, get on the lift. Can you not path onto the lift? No, she can't. Goodbye. I don't know where this is taking me. Found the train. I'm going by myself. What about my friends? Uh, they'll find their way, as usual. Yeah, I guess that's the crucible. There we go, there's some distance based shading. All right. Well, we got here. Oh my, this cradle really is enormous, isn't it? I'm sure even st the stonemasons who built our endless mausoleums would break a sweat at the sight of this. Well, here we are at last, the cradle. Looks like no alehouse I've ever seen, he chuckles. This platform should take us inside. When we get to Vela, you can do the talking, confessor. I reckon that's the best chance we've got. If she sees the rest of us, she'll only want to talk with her swords, what with us being mutineers and all. I'm guessing your superiors want her brought in quietly, but if things go south, and I'm betting they will, we'll have your back. There may be only a handful of us, but we faced tough odds before. I'll hear her out. Maybe this plan of hers isn't so bad, he frowns. I hope for your sake you're joking, confessor. We ain't trifling with petty crimes here. Bella could tear this world asunder. And if you want to help her do it, then you'll be facing my blade before you do. Ow. All right. See if we can find Vela. Hello. Frost is staring at the cradle in silent awe. His former exuberance stopped dead in its tracks. I, er, please forgive my in ineloquence. I find myself quite overcome. What's the matter? He pauses for a while while he mulls his words. In matters of religion, confessor, I am my father's son and my mother's for that matter. Apostates to the end. They fled their homeland rather than truckle to any god. But this place, the power, the industry, the knowledge that its, existent, its existence represents, I can find no other word for it but holy. Is this what the devout feel towards their gods? I mean, it's a giant ball. It's impressive, but it's a giant metal ball. Being here makes my stomach churn, but make no mistake, my sword will swing true. If it were up to me, I'd rush Vela head on, give her no time to think before I cleave her in two. But Basalt thinks we should hold back. Assess the situation while you two have a little chat. And loath as I am to admit it, the bastard's usually right. All right, let's see if we can find Vela. Is she just going to be up here, or am I going to have to fight through something? Oh, hello. Uh, 
there's a bunch of peeps and a god. I come in peace. Bella stands with poise, her commands booming through the chamber as Dark Star mercenaries scurry at her back beck and call. Um, attempt to approach silently. You creep toward Vela, your soft steps muffled by the clamor. You're nearly close enough to intervene when her head snaps around, her eyes fixed upon you. Whoop. I've been had. A freeze and say nothing. An intruder here? We're leagues under the Sky Realms. In a place as dangerous as it is inhospitable, you must be here. You must be incredibly capable, or extremely stupid, to follow me here. Um, how about both? She squints. Hold on, you're that whelp who had the gall to approach me on the blinding light, aren't you? A thin smile spreads across her lips. My, you've had quite the journey, Inquisitor. I almost didn't recognize you. But you must have had help. She ponders a moment. Only Orlaith saw the map that led here. She wouldn't have decided to come here on her own, so Basalt must have convinced her, and if he was putting a team together, Caxton Frost would be top of that list. Maybe the Duchess as well. Nope, just me. <laughs> she shakes her head, but it can't just be Basalt leading this. He'd never have joined the Inquisition without persuasion. It can only be care. You don't deny it? She grins. So a pack of traitors led by a fledging, fledging, uh, fledgling inquisitor have come to nip at my heels. Tell me, just what are you hoping to achieve? Uh, your old friends helped me get here, but I've come to join your cause. She lets out an impertinent laugh. And why would, why would I trust the likes of you? Even if I needed assistance, which I most certainly do not, why would I accept it from an Inquisition spy? She gestures at the aberrant being that fills your vision. This extraordinary entity will be our salvation. It will mend our broken world and abolish the evils of humanity. All we need to do is awaken it, and we are so nearly ready. What is that thing? I want to see it, but I can't turn my neck. Some would call it God, but that would be to diminish, diminish its power, for the gods are of this world and are bound by its rules. This being is of the void, the non-place of pure creation, where time and space act in mysterious ways. We know not whether the Amberians plucked it whole from that realm or wove its corporeal flesh from void stuff. Regardless, in the ancient Amberian dialect they called it an angel after the mythical creatures of middle age lore. How is it so powerful? Reality is formed from the semiotics of cipher. It is the language that flows through all things, the truth behind the illusion that dances before our eyes. With study we may learn to alter its flow, its rhythm. We may tweak a word here, adjust a sentence there, and this is the basis of all magic. What we cannot do is alter the language of cipher itself. There are strict rules by which we must adhere, absolute and unbreakable limits upon what is possible, but this entity that stands before us, being of the void, it is fundamentally separate from our laws and has the power to change the very essence of reality. That doesn't sound dangerous at all. What do you plan to do with it? She grins. I'm going to change everything. The Imperians built this structure as an incubator for the angel, and they had succeeded in waking it. Had they succeeded, their tyranny would have enslaved the world for eternity. We're fortunate that the lesser evil occurred, for in stirring the angel they caused the world rend, and nearly obliterated all of existence. But we have learned from their mistakes. We will use the angel to turn this world into a heaven, where every soul is free and equal. Ha. <laughs> um. A true optimist. Uh, yeah, this sounds uh, dangerous. You could spark a second apocalypse and destroy what's left of our world. Over the past few years, I've recruited some of the most accomplished cipher scholars alive. With the correct warding, we will prevent a syntax cascade. Of this, we are almost certain. 
And regardless, is the reward not worth the risk? What's left of this world is barely worth saving, but I would elevate us to something nobler than history has ever known. Her eyes glint as they look into your own. You see, Inquisitor, there's, there is such beauty in us, such majesty, such potential. I have sailed the Skyrims and seen such wonder, she waves her hand. Nay, not the void obelisk of Al Osfara or the thousand spires of beyond university. I have seen the nuns of the vagrant hospice tending to their enemies. I've seen a man give his life to the blood barons of Terran so that a stranger might live. She sighs. I've seen a child recently orphaned, her face speckled with blood, offer me the last of her bread. She steps closer, but wherever my sails have taken me, I've seen the hopes and dreams of the common folk crushed by oppressors, be they Union, Wiccan, or otherwise. Everywhere I go, the poor writhe in the mud so that the rich may sleep in silk. Once I thought my sword could write the wrongs of the world that morals and ethics could guide my blade, but I've seen too many skyships burn and too often breathed the stench of human flesh to believe that still. In truth, I had lost hope until I had visions of an angel. Oh, great visions. You can always trust visions. Through the oneric interface of an Amberian map, I realized then what could be achieved. So you'd risk another world run just to give bread to the poor? Her stare gains a fiery intensity. I would empower us all so that every peasant stands equal to their lord. I would blunt every sword, er, shatter every cannon so that not a drop of blood would spill. She looks down, her expression suddenly vulnerable. And I would banish death itself so that no heart would ever be broken. This would be our heaven. And soon we will have it. Uh, an admirable dream, but is it really possible? She grins. I hope we're about to find out. Or I suppose we're about to find out. Very soon I will awaken the angel, not out of greed or selfishness, but for the betterment of the Sky Realms and its people. And what of your late sister, Isabet? Are you sure you're not doing this for her? Bella glares at you with a newfound fury. How dare you mention her name? You know nothing of her soul, of my family. Isabet was. She meant more to me than... Bella closes her eyes for a long moment. Isabet and my mother burned alive in my father's mansion. That Isabet was taken so young, and I, should, I alone should live. Speaks plainly to the injustice of this world. Am I wrong for wanting to change that? Oh... Uh, I'm not wearing my charm hat, am I? You don't speak for all. Many oppose you. Even your own former dark stars. Bleh. Fail. Pa, those traitors could have left of their own accord. They had no reason to fight me. I'm sure I would have let them go peacefully. Bella bellows to her crew. Awaken the angel. I don't care if the preparations aren't complete. We've run out of time. Oh, God. Don't do it. No. Her eyes return to you. I'm sorry about this. I wish there was another way. But there isn't. The coming days are crucial. Now that it's awake, we have many delicate rituals and cipher wards to enact. And you cannot be allowed to meddle in such a momentous endeavor. Well, darn it. I, I should have quit my gosh darn poopy... Stinking, freaking charm hat. Ah, oh, well. So I'm afraid this is goodbye. We will not meet again. From behind you, you hear Jack Basalt yelling at the top of his lungs. Vela, no. Oh, no. I've been stabbed. A valiant effort, human. Vela, I was so close. Do not be disheartened. Vela's blade has cut down many foes more powerful than yourself. And once again, I've plucked you from the jaws of death. One of many times, I might say. Though there's no shame in that. You've performed your task admirably. But confronting Vela again will prove 
a formidable challenge. The unbearing craft she has commandeered will not be so easily assailed a second time. To fight your way through, you will surely need my assistance. The entity rattles its change. These void steel shackles are bound with Vela's magic. Only by her hand or her death will I be freed. I'm placing my trust in you, human. Guess I have no choice. The deity nods in conjoined heads. Now make your way to the High Confessor. I believe she wishes to speak with you. So that's not the end, huh? I'm back here. Ah. I could have passed that charm. Check. Hi. Oh, you have anything to say? Oh, it's good to be out in the Sky Realms again. Nope. Yeah, we've heard that before. Hi. An authoritative voice booms from the ships. Sound relays. You assume it belongs to Admiral Kalos of the Union Navy. It's simply out of the question. Need I remind you, High Confessor Care, that your position of authority in this tribunal is in spite of your numerous crimes against the Union, most of which were committed alongside Vela herself. I dare not, I care not if you sent an incongruable band of felons to find my daughter. Considering your history with Vela, I cannot in good conscience allow you or your lackeys anywhere near her. So they had a history with Vela? So you will use that dilapidated old relic of an airship to hold the flank. You will not interfere with this operation, which is solely in the hands of the Apostatic Union Navy. Dismissed that insufferable fool of all the people responsible for this nightmare. He is hardly blameless if he had just been a father to Vela when she needed one. Uh, who's talking right now? A loud clang rings out from the coffin. I think, um, okay, the High Confessor is talking. And now he would beat her at her own twisted game. They want to steal it. Confessor 17. They want to steal it, Confessor 17. The Navy wants the cradle for themselves. So the Union subjugation of the Sky Realms is absolute. Uh, I thought you were on the Union side. Never. I despise these loathsome bastards. But I sing along to their tune to keep myself from a prison cell, same as you. And besides, this is the only way I can stop Vela. That's all that matters to me now. A sigh rings out. I suppose I'll have to hold the flank. Just as Admiral Kalos demands, it is too late with too much at stake to rock the boat now. So we just give up? I did not say that, Confessor. We have a card to play yet. While you were off getting yourself killed, the rest of your team managed to escape the Underlands aboard the Cutter, thanks to Frost's repairs. As you have no doubt noticed, the Cradle has made its ascent to the Sky Realms. I haven't noticed, actually. The Union Navy, finally realizing the gravity of the situation, showed up in full force, but they can't punch through. The Cradle's defensive shield. They can't punch through the, through the shield. Some sort of highly advanced Imbarian tech. So for the moment, they are at a stalemate. So all we have to do is slip past both. Pilot the cutter and sneak your strike team past the largest fleet in the world. And through an impenetrable Imbarian shield to stop the most dangerous person alive. What could be simpler? How would we get past the fleet? In its current state, the cutter will be detected at once by the Navy's aeronautical wizards, but Caxton Frost has an idea. There are legend of an ancient Iberian skycraft, a phantom vessel able to break any barrier or evade any pursuit, said to be wrecked in the world rend, never to be seen again. Many have searched for the crashed vessel. Without success, squires find nothing or suffer apop apoplexy. The Union Navy considers it merely a myth. Frost believes otherwise. There were rumors of a particular island with an Iberian wreck that has been drifting through the Sky Realms. 
That very island has strayed into the Oneric Isles. Search the most distant islands in the Oneric Isles and find whatever power it is that hides the wreck from scrying mines. Then you might slip past the navy blockade. So how can I actually get to those islands? You cannot pilot the cutter as Frost needs to modify it before your assault on the cradle. No, it seems you will need your own airship. Heck yeah, finally. Take this writ of per permission. It will help you bypass the bureaucratic nightmares of purchasing a vessel from the Winged Merchants Guild. As for the hefty fee, you will no doubt be required to pay. I cannot help you. Our coffers are empty, I'm afraid. Well, I've got money and treasure to sell. And take this time to make sure we are fully prepared for the fight ahead. I do not think this situation will resolve anytime soon. And assaulting the crater, cradle will be no easy task. Now you should get going. I have my own troubles to attend to. What troubles? Oh, it's a rather delicate matter. If I'm honest, your help would be appreciated. Sure. As you have no doubt noticed, there are tensions between this tribunal and the wider union. Both the Navy and my Inquisition superiors have begun to question my loyalty to the cause, so they've asked me to issue a command they know I will find. She inhales throatily. Disagreeable. There is a small house in the western forest of Hallowshire, where our agents have stumbled upon a certain godlet. This tiny stunted god would be of little significance, only my superiors know that in years past, it was in my care that I was fond of the thing. She is silent a moment. This is not the time to arouse their suspicions. You must go to this godlet. You must, she swallows slowly, slay it on my orders. And then we will continue as normal. Tell me about this godlet. She slams it inside of the coffin. Does it matter, confessor? They are the shriveled, pathetic forms of diminished gods. There have been thousands scattered around the Sky Realms since the God War. The Inquisition destroys more of them every day. This one is no different. Okay, I'll kill it for you. It's like, um... Humanely putting down a pet, I guess. Thank you, Confessor. Remember, you will find it in the western forest of Hallowshire. Take this void scalpel. Only void steel can harm a god. Use it to slit its throat. Oh, God. Well, we had another encounter with Vela, but uh, I guess it's not over yet. Not quite what I was expecting. Um, I'm still bummed that I couldn't pass that charm check. Uh, but I can't go back. You can't reload, so... Can't see what happens if I pass it. Oh, well. Well, we're gonna get our own airship, and uh, we gotta go steal some thingamajig so that we can hide our uh, ship here from the Navy while we go head to the Crucible. Um, I want to go outside. Wait, how do I... Where is outside? Down here. She said the crucible was in the air. Oh, okay. There it is, way over there. Yeah, there's the navy. Hmm. Alright, well, uh, we'll see if we can... Get back to the crucible. Get my own airship and, uh... Confront Vela again. Interesting. Alright, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.